Two Japanese appetizer classes can combine to form a flavor-packed light meal. With a little patience and practice, you can crank out dynamite dumplings that'll make you think twice before bothering to order them from your local takeout joint ever again. We're going to get started with our miso soup, for which we will need some dashi, or a very savory umami flavored stock. You can make your own by buying some bonito flakes and some special types of seaweed, but you can also use a dashi powder like this, which you can get online or at your local Asian grocery store. So to begin, we'll take four cups of nice, clean, pure water and add the appropriate amount of dashi powder to make a stock, or dashi. If it seems like a little bit of a cheat code, it's because I'm always trying to balance approachability and authenticity when I show you uh, ethnic recipes, and I figure there's a better chance of you making this if you take one little cheat code as opposed to me recommending that you make everything from scratch. Anyways, I'll get off my soapbox and tell you that I'm adding about a third cup of miso and slowly swirling that in and breaking it up. We just want to have this over medium high heat. We don't want to bring it to a boil. We just want to bring it up to a low simmer. I'm adding in about eight ounces of firm tofu, some wakame seaweed that I'm going to slice into strips. And we're going to just let this simmer for five to seven minutes. Again, not bringing it up to a rolling boil. I also added some green onions in there. And uh, there you go, that's done. Set it to the back, keep it warm, and we'll move on to our gyoza. Got a pound of pork that I'm gonna put in, along with a couple of crushed cloves of garlic, a handful of very thinly sliced scallions, about three quarters to a cup of sliced green cabbage. You want about a tablespoon of either freshly grated ginger or I have some ginger puree there. Optionally, a teaspoon or so of sambal or sriracha for heat. Just a little splash of toasted sesame oil and a couple tablespoons of soy sauce. One final cracking of fresh pepper, and then just get in there and give everything a good thorough mix to combine. Homemade dumplings to me are one of the most satisfying and delicious uh, things that you can make. They're 10 times better than anything that comes out of a restaurant. And while they do take a little work and a little practice, they're really well worth it. They're a great appetizer to serve at parties or just when you feel like making something tasty by hand. I've got some nice round dumpling wrappers here. Again, got those at the local Asian grocery store, but you can also order them online. And we're gonna fill them with a heap teaspoon of that pork filling right there in the middle. Gonna go around the entire edge of that dumpling with just some good cold, clean water. And then sealing these is the only slightly tricky part, but you're just gonna pleat one edge of the dumpling and then press that pleated side into the other side. That water is gonna help with the starch to get it to stick. Just keep pleating, folding over and pressing down. I've made these before with wonton wrappers and you can just fold them up in a triangle. That's definitely an easier way of doing it. Uh, and you can usually find wonton wrappers in your local grocery store, but the uh, texture of these dumplings is a little bit more authentic. They're a little thicker. And uh, if you're gonna go on this one, I say go all out. So I'm gonna add a little olive oil or you could use a neutral oil in the bottom of a skillet over medium heat. You want these to start to cook through before they get too golden brown on the bottom. Add them in in a single layer. Don't crowd the pan too, too much. And I would recommend using something non-stick here. Just make sure they come out nice and easily. Once you've got a nice golden brown color on the bottom like that, we need to finish cooking them in a nice steam oven. So we're just gonna add in some water. Depending on the size of your skillet, you may want a quarter cup to a half cup. Give them about two to three minutes for that dumpling wrapper to steam and cook through. And also to make sure our pork is perfectly cooked. Check and make sure you've got a thumbnail worthy golden brown crust on the bottom. I'd say we achieved just that. And you can dab these on a paper towel if you want to get any excess oil off the bottom. Finally, we'll make a quick sauce with some brown sugar or honey, a couple tablespoons of soy sauce. As always, the exact ingredients and instructions will be down below. A dab of sambal again for heat and a dash of toasted sesame oil, along with a little bit of rice wine vinegar. Give all that a stir to thoroughly combine, get that honey or brown sugar dissolved. And then we'll bowl this up, give this miso soup a taste. You can always garnish it with a few fresh green onions, but I'm gonna skip that for once. Shocking, I know. We'll put our dipping sauce down for our gyoza and you don't have to get all fancy like this, but I'm gonna lay them around in a ring so that those beautiful brown bottoms can uh, stick up in the air and uh, show off their golden brown, crispy, shiny crust. I did garnish those with a few thinly sliced green onions. 
and now we're ready to give all this a try. If you've never had miso soup, it is literally just a bomb of umami flavors from those that dashi broth, that really rich miso. Definitely highly recommend giving it a try. Really light as well, not gonna weigh you down or leave you feeling too heavy or distended. These gyoza, um, again, I've made them on the channel before, but I felt like it was worth showing you guys again, actually getting a written recipe because man, they are amazing. Salty, slightly sweet, a nice rich savoriness from that toasted sesame oil in there. That dipping sauce just brings everything together. Please, I'm telling you, give these a try. I know you're gonna love them. Your family and friends will as well. As always, thanks so much for watching and uh, go make something delicious.